And welcome back to an episode of CBB Talk, the award ceremony. I came out dressed to impress today with the award ceremony, <clears throat> the CBB Talk award ceremony. This is the biggest episode of the year, so get ready for it. We're going to crown some awards. We got a round. I believe we have nine awards to give out. So we gotta jump right into it. I'm gonna go, um, you know, get the screen going and get ready for this because this is the CBB award ceremony. So here it is, the talk CBB talk award show. So let's get right into it. Here's our first award of the day, and I'm gonna have to press the screen. This is the Carmelo Anthony Award for Freshman of the Year. Let's meet your nominees. Grady Dick, Kansas, Keontae George, Baylor, and Brandon Miller, Alabama. This was a very a tough award to give out, man, because all three of these players are amazing. Um, just amazing players. All all three of these guys are. They're all going to the NBA draft. Grady Dick came in here, not supposed to be the highly talented prospect. And, and Kyle Flipkowski was the closest guy that didn't make this list. I decided to give it to Keontae George just because he had so many special games. I just remember him going off. And Grady Dick, great shooter. Keontae George, amazing score. And Brandon Miller was one of the best, was the best player on the best team in the country for most of the year. So he lets give out this Carmelo Anthony Award for freshman of the year. And your winner is Brandon Miller, Alabama. Brandon Miller wins this award. He did not come without any controversy throughout the year, but Brandon Miller was the guy for Alabama. He's going to be a top four, top three pick in this NBA draft, assuming nothing bizarre happens. He's that good of a guy. And, yes, his bad NCAA tournament helped hurt. It definitely hurt him, but he was still one of the best players in the country throughout the year. Average almost 20 points a game, a very efficient, can do it off the dribble catch and shoot, lengthy defender, and when you're the best player on the best team, you're going to win this award, and that's what Brandon Miller was. The only person that deserved this award was Brandon Miller, and I didn't make All-American teams, but he would have been probably on my second team if I did. Brandon Miller is your award, is your winner of the Carmelo Anthony Award for Freshman of the Year. Let's move on to your next award. The next award is transfer of the year this is the jerry lucas the third award he famously transferred um in college basketball one of the greatest transfers of all time he is this what this award named after because transfers transfers are new so maybe in a couple years this award will be changed but for now this is the jerry lucas third award for transfer of the year let's meet your nominees Keontae George, Kansas State, Nigel Pack, Miami, and Sule Boom, Xavier. All three of these guys are great guards that all were, if not if not the best, one of the best players on a highly ranked t- um, tournament team. Keontae George, one of the greatest stories in college basketball, led this Kansas State team to a three seed, was their leading scorer throughout the year. And yes, he got outshined by Nigel Pack. I'm not Nigel Pack. Gosh, he got outshined by Marquise Noel in the tournament. He was still their leading scorer throughout the year, and his amazing comeback story after collapsing on the court just two years ago, three years ago, is just amazing. Nigel Pack from Kansas State, where Keontae Johnson is now. I said, I might have said Keontae George, Keontae Johnson. Nigel Pack transfers in Miami, gets a lot of money, and and he was one of the best players on a team that made a crazy Final Four run, which Miami did. And well, he he's an amazing shooter. We saw in that game against Houston all the threes he really made as a at, as a team, but especially him carrying throughout the year. He's a great point guard, great shooter. And in the final four, he did lose a shoe, which really hurt Miami. But still, I mean, a crazy amount of money. He's coming back next year to try to bring Miami back to a final four. And Sule Boom was the best player in Xavier throughout the year. They did lose Zach Freeman, which hurt them in the tournament, but still led them to a Sweet 16. And he had so many great games. But I think what hurts him in this award chase, he had some bad games down the stretch in the, in the season, but he was still an amazing player throughout for Xavier, one of the best players in the Big East. But here's your winner for the Jerry Lucas third award for transfer of the year. The winner is Keontae Johnson. 
only rightfully so Keontae Johnson win this award. He won my Big Twelve transfer of the year, and he will and and he is going to win this national transfer of the year award for the sole fact is one, the story he had, and two, the player he was, averaging almost twenty points for Kansas State leading them to a team that was projected last in the Big 12 to making this Elite Eight and being very close to making the Final Four. That's just an insane story, insane run, and a great player, and I hope he can succeed at the next level, wherever that is. Let's go to your next award. So we have two winners so far, and we're getting on some more fun awards before the end. Here it is, the Mark Vidal Award for Dog of the Year. Mark Vidal, a guy at... Baylor, who won a national championship a couple years ago. He's now in the NFL. That dude was just a dog. He would do all the little things. And this award for dog of the year is a guy who's strong, a built dude who's not scared to get into it, but also just does little think things for each team. So I have three guys for dog of the year. Man, this was a tough award to give out, but this is my Mike Vital Award for dog of the year. Let's meet your nominees. Andre Jackson, UConn. Nigel, oh, God, North Chad O'Meara, Miami, and Oscar Shibwe, Kentucky. All three of these guys are what I would describe as a dog. Andre Jackson was that was that glue guy piece for a team that won the national championship in with UConn. North Chad O'Meara made a Final Four. This dude's big, strong, and not scared to get into it. One of the best rebounds or rebounders in the country. Oscar Shiwe was player of the year last year, but this dude's a dog. We saw in his two games, he still had like the four, third, fourth most rebounds in the whole tournament. He gets into it, and he was the heart and soul of this Kentucky team. And if he doesn't come back next year, it'll be weird to see what this team looks like without him. This is a, the Mark Vidal dog of the year, and your winner is... Nor Chad O'Meer, Miami. I loved watching this Miami team for the sole purpose of Nor Chad O'Meer. The transfer from Moorhead State really helped this team make the Final Four. He's such a big, strong dude. I could see him playing in the NFL, which helps his case to win this award. And he just knows how to get down low and bullies people inside. Amazing rebounder. And he was a, one of the big pieces Miami made the Final Four. The guy down low, they really didn't have any other center. So they needed him in at all times. And when he was off the court, they were, they were much worse. And yeah, he's just a dog on there on the court. Gets gets in people's gets under people's skin. Is a great rebounder. Strong dude. You can't really take the ball away from this dude. Oh, just a force down low. So this dude's just a dog. That's how I describe North Amir. He wins the Mark Vital. May um dog of the year. Let's move on to your next award. Here are your awards for the NC State Sports Award for most disappointing team. Um, NC State, as a guy who lives in North Carolina, that's kind of the reason I picked them because every year, no matter the sport, NC State has high expectations, especially in football. They always think they're going to be a good team, and they always disappoint. So most disappointing team, there's a lot of them this year. I think everyone knows who's going to win this award, but let's still meet your three nominees. North Carolina, Michigan, and Villanova. All three of these teams were quite disappointing this, this year. Let's talk about Villanova. This team kind of went under the radar for disappointing because the fact that they were around preseason 15 and didn't make the tournament under first-year coach Kyle Neptune at Villanova. They just didn't live up to expectations. Justin Moore is returning, so that could help him next year. He was injured for half the year. Ken Whitmore was good, but he wasn't amazing as many people thought he was going to be. They really lacked a great point guard on that team, which hurt. Eric Dixon had some good runs, um, good moments throughout the year, but his Villanova team um, got hotter later in the year but couldn't pull together a tournament resume after a very bad start to the year, and we're, I will hope for better things next year under Kyle Neptune. Michigan, man, they were another preseason-ranked team that failed to make the tournament, and all year they were just doing all right, all right, all right, and could never string together wins, and many people thought they still had a tournament resume late into the year, lost their first-round game to Rutgers in the Big Ten tournament and really hurt their case now, there. Now, Hunter Dixon's transferred out their point guard – um. I can't remember his name, went to the draft. So this team will be looking very different next year. Jawan Howard, many people want him fired. I'm not there yet, but this Michigan team is going to have to have a good year, pull some players out of the portal, string together some. They're going to lose Jet Howard. 
Dickinson's gone. Michigan's going to be bad. And this is a very disappointing year for the Wolverines. And then UNC, preseason one to not make it in the tournament has never happened before. And it happened this year. It's hard to describe what really happened to this team. Kayla Love's gone now. Baycott's coming back. RJ Davis, they're going to get some guys out of the transit pool. Really, everyone's left their team besides RJ and Armando Baycott. We'll see um, what they can have ne- next year. But this year, they were just quite a disappointing team. Could never could never get good wins. They had one quad one win the whole year, and that and that's it. And you can't make the tournament if you don't have one if you have one quad one win unless you win your league. And guess what? They they lost in their second round game to Virginia. So let's meet your winner for the NC State Award for most disappointing team. And the winner is obviously the UNC Tar Heels. Not a real shocker there. They were just not good. I, I have nothing to say besides they were just not a good team this year. Maybe I do think they were overrated by the general public going into this year because they made a tournament and were, they were returning their four best players besides Brady Mag. They're returning four stars. And I'm scared that the public's going to make this mistake about FAU next year. I was thinking about FAU right now when maybe a preseason top 10 team. And here's why I'm kind of scared to say that. Yes, they were really good throughout the year. But was Florida Atlantic ever a top 10 team this year? What would make them a top 10 team next year if they were never a top 10 team this year? I know they made the Final Four. I know they were close to making the national championship. And maybe maybe I'm maybe I'm doubting them, but if they were never a top 10 team this year and they have the same team, I don't think they should be a top 10 team this year. I think we're going to overrate them going in next year, and they might be disappointing. I still think they're going to be good, but I would rank them in the low teens, 20s, because of the fact that I think other teams are going to get better. And if FAU can get transfers and keep this whole team together or maybe get a little better, then yes, I could see the argument for them to be higher. But right now, they're not getting any better, so I'm not going to put them way better than they were this year, if that makes any sense. But yeah, UNC was disappointing this year. That goes without saying, and they are really just a unanimous choice to win this award. Here's Will's favorite player award. This is the Kyle, Kyle Guy Award. Um, what my maybe probably my favorite college basketball player ever as a Virginia fan. How can you not love Kyle Guy? Um, uh, I think yesterday to this day was when he hit the free throws against Eric Al- Auburn. I still see people talk about the double dribble. We get it. It was a double dribble. It was four years ago. Stop being salty about it. Let's meet your finalist for Kyle Guy Award for my favorite player. This is a biased award, but it's my favorite player. Reese Beekman, Virginia. Jalen Pickett, Penn State, and Marquise Noel, Kansas State. I don't know if Marquise Noel would have been on this list before the tournament, but watching him play, it was like must-watch TV. He was that good, that entertaining. Those games against Kentucky and Michigan State were some of the greatest point guard um, play I've ever seen. His playmaking, his shot-making, it was just special throughout the tournament. And he was still such a good player. And as a short, no, I'm not, I'm not as short as Marquise Noel. I'm a little taller, but as a short basketball player, it, it inspires me. Reese Beekman's a guy who it was my favorite player on my favorite team, and he's declared for the draft. Could come back. Reese, come back as my favorite player on my favorite team. He has to be on this list. Just an outstanding defender, and he can make plays on the offensive end. And I think that's going to be a reason he's going to return to bas- uh, college basketball next year because of the fact that he needs to progress his offensive game. But, man, I love how the way Reese Beekman plays, man. I can't describe it. Jalen Pickett, um, he was a unicorn this year for Penn State. He they, Penn State became one of my favorite teams to watch throughout the end of the regular season. They had a lot of miracle plays from um, Cam Wh- Winter. Um, and in the Big Ten tournament, of course, they almost won the championship. That first game against Texas A&M. Well, they won the NCAA tournament, um, and Penn State was one of my favorite teams, and Jalen Pickett was the staple of that team, uh, just the way he plays. This is the, one of my toughest awards to give out because I love all three of these players, and here it is. Will, my favorite player. Who is my favorite player this year in college basketball to win the Kyle Guy Award? And the winner is Jalen Pickett. Jalen Pickett is my favorite player in college basketball this year because of the unicorn style he plays. He out there as a point guard for this team that was not supposed to be good throughout the year, and will post up, will put your best, will put your put your player in a blender, will bully him down low, finish, play make. He does everything for this team. He had a, I think he had a triple double throughout the year, 
he, he would he would be an All-American. I think he'd be a third-team All-American on my list. And he led Penn State to the NCAA tournament, which doesn't happen at all. I'm going to miss him in college basketball, but this dude was a beast throughout the year. And, man, I want the, all three of those players could have won this award, but Jalen Pickett is the first ever, the inaugurable, if I said that right, the inaugurable. I'm not even going to try. Why am I trying to pronounce the name? He's the first ever my Will Dickinson Kyle Guy Award for my favorite player in college basketball, and he deserves it. The next award is the White Boy of the Year. Um, this is not being a race thing, even though it is, but there's always um there's always a white boy in college basketball that takes it takes um takes the world by storm, who is usually a villain, and that's why I named it after Christian Leitner because of the he he was the villain type guy and um as a white guy I gotta give an award to who is the best white guy because most of the time it's not the white guy's best player. So here's my white boy man of the year um player of the year white boy of the year the Christian Lightning Award let's meet your nominees Drew Timmy Gonzaga Tyler Kulik Marquette and Azulis Tabellis Arizona all three of these guys are just amazing players. I mean, Drew Timmy, the guy people call him the grandfather of college basketball, even though he was a true true senior next year. Tyler Kulik, man, just a an outstanding playmaker, point guard for that Marquette team who was a two seed NCAA tournament. And there's Lewis Tabellis, man, just a great player in the post, power forward, really for Arizona. And if he can return next year, Arizona will be back to the st- spot they were these last two years. And it hasn't came with tournament success so far, but it will keep coming just like how it happened to UConn. All three of these players could win this award. Tyler Kulik and Tobelis, they could all come back next year. I don't expect Timmy to, but they could. And this would be a very, this is a very tough award to give out. All these three of these players are great. I think they would all be all Americans. So it's tough, but I think the, the, the award has to go to one of these players. And it's Drew Timmy. Drew Timmy is the winner of the white boy, man of the year, white boy, White boy of the year because he in 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 in, in, he assembles the white boy of college basketball. He did great player on a not like team, and he's all those. Not a lot of people like Gonzaga for the fact that they never win the tournament. Go that they never win the they never won the national championship. Um, he's really good. He's been good for the last three years of college basketball, pretty much his whole career, and then. Yeah, he's just not liked. People don't like Timmy. They call him the grandfather. They don't like his mustache, don't like his celebrations, and I definitely understand why. But you can't deny how good he is at college basketball, and if that was the end of his career, it was just it sucks that he was in foul trouble. But, man, he was one of the best players down the stretch there, and he was damn in my argument to be the player of the year. Like, if, if, if Gonzaga made the Final Four, I could have considered it. He was that good. He would be an All-American first-team player for me. Um, from maybe back to back seasons, he's he's been that good in his whole career, man, and he is maybe the greatest player in Gonzaga history. So the award has to go to Drew Timmy for White Boy of the Year. I'm gonna take a quick break and come back with these last couple of awards. We're back with the Defensive Player of the Year. This is the Javon Carter Award because he's the first, he's the only player to ever win Defensive Player of the Year twice in college basketball, and man, he was the staple of those press Virginia teams that were really good that made runs in the tournament. And he's still in the NBA playing good minutes because of his defense. And he's really progressed as a shooter, but man, in college, he was the best defender in college basketball. And um, he's, he, he is the name of this award because of that. So let's meet your nominees for the defense player of the year. Ryan Kalkbrenner, Creighton, Reese Beekman, Virginia, and Jalen Clark, UCLA. Ryan Kalkburn is the only shot blocker on this list. And, man, Nathan Menza could have been a guy that I considered. Derek Lively was an amazing defender. There was many other guys that I considered. But Ryan Kalkburn is a guy that did it without fouling. And that really helped this case because, man, he would go straight up. He was so tall. And he's made a case to be an NBA player just from the fact of his shot blocking capability. We saw what Walker Kessler is doing this year in the NBA. And I don't know if he's as good as Walker Kessler is. But he could definitely play a role like that in the NBA. And then these last two guys are great on-ball defenders. Reese Beekman's a guy that I've watched every game go out there and lock down your best player and do it at an, an elite level. He has one of the great best hands in college basketball and get out in transition. And 
you if you if you're playing Virginia, expect your if he's a guard, your best player to not have a good night. And as a guy who doesn't watch a lot of Pac-12 games. Because they are late at night, I I know, but I still know Jalen Clark's defensive capability, and we saw without you without him, UCLA was definitely not as good as a team, and they lost in the elite uh, Sweet Sixteen because they couldn't get stops on Gonzaga, and I believe with Jalen Clark that wouldn't have been the case. UCLA was still was still a good defense without him, but man, they were one of the best defenses in the country with him. And Jalen Clark was the engine of that defense, and all his players speak so highly about him. So I have to put him on this list for Defensive Player of the Year. And here's your win for the Javon Carter Defensive Player of the Year goes to Bree Speakman of Virginia. And, yes, this might be a little biased because I know how good Jalen Clark and Kalkbrenner are, but I give it to Reese Speakman because I've watched him night in and night out be that guy on the defensive end. And I understand that maybe if I watched more of UCLA's games fully, I would have picked them. But Reese Beatman is a guy I've seen it, and Virginia is always one of the best defenses in the country. So when you're that good of a defensive team with your best player being an on-ball guy who gets in the passing lanes, is just a disruptor like Reese Beatman is. He should be a two-time ACC Defensive Player of the Year, but they gave it to Mark Williams last year, but he won it this year. Deler- diver- Deler- Deservingly so. Reese Beatman's that good. And he's my winner of a Javon Carter Defense Player of the Year. I'm really just fumbling the words today. Maybe I'm a little rusty after not doing the episode in, in like five days. Let's move on to your next award. For the Dean Smith Coach of the Year Award. Dean Smith, legend. What else do I have to say about him? Couldn't do the Coach K because that's my ACC Coach of the Year. So Dean Smith is the National Coach of the Year Award. Which, who doesn't love Dean Smith? Here are nominees. Here are your, here are your nominees. Dusty May, FAU, Nate Oates, Alabama, and Jerome Tang, Kansas State. Dusty May wouldn't have been a guy that made my list if we did this a month ago. But guess what? He's on here now because he took FAU to the Final Four and was damn near one shot. He was one shot away, a cu- two seconds away from going to the national championship with FAU. He de- de- deserves it. Only lost four games the whole year, and FAU was an amazing story. Nate Oates on this list because he had the best team in the Best team in the country for a majority of the year was number one overall seed in the tournament. Had an amazing offense, good defense, and they, he was on there. Should Dan Hurley probably replace him? Yes, but I made, I didn't make this uh the final nominees before the national championship, which is fair. So Dan Hurley's not on this list, but if I had to redo it, he would have been on this list. And then Jerome Tang for Kansas State, projected last in the Big 12, three seed, made the Elite Eight. We already talked a lot about Kansas State with Marquise Noel and Keontae Johnson. But the all three of these coaches are amazing. Dan Hurley would probably be on this list and replace Nate Oates if I did it again. But too late. Nate Oates is on there. So he you probably know he's not going to win this award. But let's see who's my winner of the Dean Smith Coach of the Year. It's Jerome Tang, man. What he did at Kansas State. And yes, Jerome Tang did not win my Big 12 Coach of the Year. And that was on the regular season when Kansas was... Damn near the best team in the country, and Bill Self won it. And I do believe Bill Self is probably my top five play- coaches. But he just couldn't make the list because um the the no tournament success. And I understand he didn't coach that. And, and I, I believe if Bill Self coaches that game, Kansas makes the Sweet 16 with having a, a phenomenal game with UConn. Who knows? But that's a what if. And I don't do what ifs. I do Jerome Tang. What he did at Kansas State was amazing, and we'll see how he can recover after losing a lot of players this year, but I expect him to do really well. In his first year, Kansas State wins my national coach of the year. I mean, wow, that's a high start. Let's see if he can maintain it. I think this is the last award coming up, and it's the Lou Alcindor Player of the Year. Here you're not. I, ah, the nominees. I forgot to do it. Anyways, here are your nominees. Trace Jackson Davis, Drew Timmy, and Zach Eady. All three of these guys are bigs, but that's how college basketball is now. It's a big run um, league, whatever. It's, 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 the college basketball is run by bigs now because they stay college basketball longer. Trace Jackson Davis had a phenomenal last year in Indiana, man. He he was just a beast. Um, in Big Ten play, he was damn near better than Zach Eady. Um was a second round exit in the tournament and all three of these guys didn't make the final four, which hurts their case. But they all three were just the best players throughout the year. Drew Timmy, I already talked a lot about him, but 
what he did in potentially his final year at Gonzaga was just um a staple. He's the all time leading Zag ever at scoring. Zach Eady, man, non conference, he was just a dog. In conference, he continued to be that good. He was still really good in the NCAA tournament, but he couldn't get his shots there in that game against FDU. And I almost um I, I will talk about this later, whoever wins, but the FDU game, man, really hurt Zach Eady's case there. All three I could give this award to all three of these guys, but at the end of the day, you know, we've seen all where the major awards go to, and I won the stray different from it, but I can't couldn't. Zach Eady's my national player of the year for the fact of what what he did for this Purdue team. They were not ranked coming into the year. They he got him to a number one ranking, was a number one seed in the tournament, and yes, they lost it fairly Dickinson. And th- and that was the reason I almost didn't pick him. I wanted to pick Trace Jackson Davis, but I couldn't do it because I c- I'm I, that would just try to be different. Zach Eadie's won every award. He deserves it. He was an unstoppable force, and if he comes back to Purdue next year, I expect him to be in that top three again. And it's hard to win it twice in a year. We saw it with Shibwe. But he should be in that. He should be in there. He should have a good chance of winning this award again next year. And what else is there to say? He said Zach Eady was that guy throughout the year in college basketball. I'm going to go pause this and do the outro. So thanks for watching the episode of my award ceremony. It was a great year of college basketball. And this wraps up my videos for 2020 to 2023 season, man. It was an amazing year. We will be doing transfer portal updates, and I'm planning to do a series on this channel called the Me- the best 64 te- team bracket ever. It's going to be the best teams from the last 10 years of college basketball, and this is what my plan is to do. The 40 the teams that made the final four in the last 10 years, so 40 teams automatically make it, and then there's 24 automatic qualifiers that I will decide based on my favorite teams that didn't make the Final Four. So that Duke 2019 team with Zion, RJ, and Cam Reddish will be in there. I'm going to go look through the teams. Will this Purdue team make it That with Zeki? We'll see. They lost. Will that Virginia team that lost? We will see. But I'm going to make sure I pick the best teams that didn't make the Final Four that I was like, man, I wish they kind of made it. And then we'll deliberate out. So, and I'll be ranking these teams in my personal mind of who is the best team over the last 10 years. And man, off the top of my head, who is the best team in the last 10 years? Ooh, that's a tough, since 2013, wait, 20, would be 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, wait, 14, 15, 16, 17. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure it's from 2014 to 2013 that Louisville team would not make it. So since 2014, it'd be UConn Duke. I think the best team would probably be 21 Baylor. Maybe we'll go look at what Ken Palm team is rated the highest and do that. Anyways, so that's my plan. I'm hyped. That's going to be one of my offseason series. And then we'll do transport updates, blah, 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 like that. Do some rankings there. But yeah, great year from 2023. I tried to dress to impress. Really, I just wore a Nike shirt with a blazer over it. But it's all fun and games. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching this episode. Let me know about my awards, your thoughts. Peace out. Love you guys. Can't wait for the offseason.